Hello. A couple of years ago, I recorded a video on the Garmin 430 uh, GPS for civil aviation type of airplanes. It has been surprisingly rather popular, more than I ever thought it would be. Um, this time, I, with a friend of mine, Chris, uh, we recorded a video of him explaining, not necessarily the replacement, but certainly the, the current version of what would be considered the uh, the Garmin 430 now. It's Garmin 6XX. In particular, the model he's explaining is the Garmin 635. I find it uh, rather an interesting device and I hope you will find that too. Hello. I'm here today to demonstrate some of the basic features of the Garmin 635 that I have in my plane. The Garmin 635 a couple of things you notice. The first is that it doesn't actually have an on-off switch. Uh, when, the, uh, when the radio master is switched on, it comes on. Once it's come on, the first thing it does is it does a check of the databases, the integrity of the databases, are they up to date, and so on. And then it gives a test. In this case, it set the CDI needles to half up and half left. So you can check, yes, indeed, we are connected correctly to the CDI and we can say continue. The other thing that you can put in here is the amount of fuel you have on board and your f fuel flow. Continue. Another thing to notice on, well, I think you've probably already noticed is this is a touchscreen device. And one of the questions I often get asked is, well, when you're flying, how on earth do you manage a touchscreen device? And the answer is what I do is I put my hand on the top and use my thumb. And I found that absolutely fine. I've never had any problems with that, even in turbulence. Another thing you can notice here is I have this connected to my uh, transponder, uh, which is also a Garmin device. It's, it's an ADS-B Rodest transponder, and I can use this to set my transponder code. VFR, for example, it will uh, enter. It will set it automatically to 1200 and so on. If you don't have it connected to a um, uh, uh, transponder, that field is used for time to destination, which is actually a useful field, which I regret miss losing. Okay, as far as radio is concerned, um, if you press and hold the button, it gives you 121.5 megahertz, the, the emergency frequency. So you can get onto the emergency frequency very quickly. Otherwise, we can change the radio frequency by the button. So let's say I wanted to talk to Gatineau, 122.3. And I just switch them over. And notice that the, um, the database has been used to find out, well, who is 122.3? In this area, it's Gatineau Flight Service. So uh, it actually tells you that. If I wanted to go to Rockcliffe, 1235, it tells me that that is Rockcliffe Unicom. And if I fly to somewhere close where there's another 1235, it will switch to tell me that that is from there. So that's very useful. Make sure you've t uh, dialed in the correct uh, radio frequency. As far as navigation is concerned, I suppose the normal thing we would be doing is we would be setting up a flight plan. Uh, I'm going to, it's assuming I want to start from Rockcliffe because that's where we're sitting at the moment. So where am I going to go from here? I'm going to go to the Ottawa VOR, YOW. You can see here how you enter waypoints. It's not a great way of entering waypoints, but I think it's better than the, the knob turning that uh, you get on, on the 430 and other things like that. Where should we go from there? Let's go to VIE, VIE, and finally we'll go from there to city center, C, Y, T, Z, Toronto Billy Bishop Airport. It's telling me that it's Toronto Billy Bishop. So yes, now we have a, a, a flight plan. I can look at the map and it gives me the line. My initial segment, I can zoom in on that. Oops. The initial segment is from here, Rockcliffe, to the VOR. And the segments beyond that are in white to indicate what's going to happen. And as I get close to the Ottawa VOR, I will get a message that tells me, turn left to a heading of this in five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, and so on. The home button will take me back to the screen, and I get 
probably the most useful screen other than the map, which is the default navigation. How far is it to the next waypoint? In this case, 10.8 miles. Um, the, what is the direct track? What is the bearing from there? What track am I actually flying? Well, I'm not flying at the moment because, as you see, my ground speed is zero and my time en route. Periodically, the message button will flash. We look at that. And what it's doing is it's telling me to set a course to 277 because that is the first uh, the direction I've got to go in. It doesn't actually matter in the sense that it doesn't change the CDI reading by doing that, but it's a useful ma aid memoir and it stops the message coming up every two or three minutes to tell you to, to set it. So yes, I've set the CDI to 277 and now as we fly, the needle will rather like a VOR, will tell me how far off track I am. And we can also pick that up from here. The map, yes, it's a map. You can declutter it. You can say how much uh, information you want to display, how much information you do not want to display, and so on. Very convenient, very easy to zoom in, zoom out. Another feature that we want to do, let's say we are flying this um, uh, to down to city center. When I arrive at city center, I'm going to want to do an arrival or an approach. Let's say I want to do an approach. It's defaulted to the airport I'm going to, CYTZ, which is nice. It says, which approach do you want to fly? Um, let's say we're flying the ILS 26 today. How are we going to get to that approach? Uh, vectors or one of the initial approach fixes, ALGA. And we can now load it. And so it's sitting there in the background waiting for us. Or we can load it and activate it. If we load it and activate it, then obviously we get the direction to fly to ALGA and from there to this to this to join the ILS and so on. So we can cancel that out since we're not actually flying this. There's a number of um, other useful features on here. Uh, utilities, for example, which will um, give us rain predictions for the GPS integrity and other uh, such things. Uh, descent profiles, where to start descent and when to start descent at what rate and so on. But the feature, I suppose, that gets used more than any of those is the direct to. I want to go direct to. Well, where do I want to go direct to? I want to go direct to the nearest airport. So it now gives me a list of the nearest airports that I can choose from in order. Rockcliffe is obviously closest because that's where I am at the moment. But let's say I was going to go into CARP. I simply do this. Its course is 256, so I'll set the course to 256 and activate it. <clears throat> and now I have the map with the magenta line showing me how to get to CARP. So I think those are the main features. We have a, a, a radio uh, with a standby, uh, the ability to switch to 1215 very quickly. We have a way of putting in a flight plan, so I'm going to go from here to here to here, and it will lead us through it on the map and on the default navigation display. And we have the approach charts, the knowledge about the approach and so on. And if we need it, we have a direct to button, which will show us a list of all of the closest airports. Thank you.